My name is uh, Jesse Lemon. I'm a uh, 2011 graduate of Florida International University. I graduate uh, summa cum laude. Um, I was a member of the Model United Nations team, and my uh, major is political science. Great. Uh, talk a little bit about what you remember that day, September 11, 2001. Well, my life was a lot different back then. Um, I, I actually was, was going to college at the time. Um, I was going to art school. I was, uh, I was a painter. And um, that day, I, I also worked a, a job. I was a, uh, I was a manager. It was my first managerial job at a, a, a telemarketing place. We used to call people and like get them to renew their, their magazines. It was, I'm sure it was quite annoying for everyone involved. But um, that day, we, we were calling people, and, and we started to get information that something had happened in New York. So I went to my office and I turned on the TV and I, I noticed that it was like a big news event. So we actually stopped calling people, and I brought the phone, the uh, television to the to the front of the room, and uh, that's when we saw the the second plane hit, and that's when we everybody knew it wasn't an accident at that point. Um, and then of course, you know, the buildings fell down one by one. Um, I think everybody just had sort of a profound sadness about the event and they all, everyone sort of handled it differently. Um, some people were mad instantly. Um, some people just were, were very sad. There were a lot of people that cried. Um, then that day when I went home, I, I lived in and Columbus. how were you? I didn't know what to think. I knew that things had just changed and I didn't know exactly what that meant. I remember, I think that particularly when the Pentagon was struck, that that had a bit more significance for me, and just that it was a such a symbol of, of um, you know, the United States military apparatus, and I kind of felt that, well, if they could hit this, it should be a pretty guarded site. If they can hit this, then you know we have a lot of vulnerabilities, and this is something really big. Um, I had to leave work early. I lived in Columbus, Ohio, which is the capital of Ohio, so everything was locked down around my house. It took forever for me to get home because all the roads were blocked and I went home. And after that, things just weren't the same in art school. Um, a lot of people talked about doing things. A lot of my friends, you know, we were all military-aged guys. And a lot of people talked about doing things. But I remember thinking that this is how life is. Everybody talks about doing things, but nobody ever actually does them. So I decided that what I was going to do is I, I was going to join the military. But the problem was I didn't know anybody that was in the military. I don't come from a military family. My, you know, nobody. I don't have any friends that were in the military. So I just started calling recruiters, and they weren't working quick enough for me. So I would call new recruiters, and uh, I went and I, I took the test. Um, and they told me that I could do anything that I wanted to do. Um, but I was colorblind, so that kind of limited some of my choices. Um, so eventually, I ended up uh, joining the infantry. It's the thing that I really wanted to, to do. I, I thought they offered me like different types of jobs you could do. And I thought, if I'm going to join the Army, this experience is going to be so different from what I plan on doing with the rest of my life that I want to enjoy it for what it is. I don't want to do another type of job in the Army. I want to do the most soldierly, soldier job I can, I can find. So I joined the infantry. Um, did, you have, did you ever have any doubts in that period from, from first feeling that in art school to actually entering as you're going through the process? You're like, well, maybe I better think about this again. And what kind of support did you receive from your family and friends? Or what was the feedback? You well, your family and friends. it was strange because at the time my life was a lot different. Like I said, I was in art school. Um, I was in a punk rock band actually, and uh, you know nobody I really knew was in the military, so a lot of people didn't know what to think of it. Um, particularly when people found out in my circle of friends, and when I started um, performing shows, I mean there were a couple times I got heckled about it. Um, my mother, I, when I called her to tell her about it. Um, she started crying and she said, not my son, and she started crying about it. And, and I said, mom, if not your son, then whose? Is this something that we're just always gonna put off to somebody else? 
if not me, then who? You know, someone has to do it. Um, How many years were you in the Army? Well, I ended up, um, I ended up going into the National Guard. So I was in and out for nine years. What happened is, actually, I, I got out, and um, then I was out for like a year and a half. And Uncle Sam decided that he hadn't seen me enough, so they called me back off of IRR, and um, which I remember the recruiter telling me only happens during case of like World War III, you know, that they had this clause that they can call you back. Well, World War III didn't happen, but they decided they wanted me back. So. Um, that was about last year, actually, uh, two years ago. Uh, I got called back. I decided that, that I wanted to go back to school, and you know, after I, I, I fulfilled my military obligation, and once I was about to start, they they called me back, and I had to go to our, Iraq. Um, while I was there, I uh, I made a promise that I wasn't going to let it interfere with school. So I actually completed about 50 hours, credit hours, while I was in Iraq. So I slept very little. I worked about 15-hour days, and then I, I did schooling after that. Um, what did you do there? What was your, and forgive me, but I don't have a lot of military background. Like, what was your job? Well, um, throughout the whole course of when I was in the Army and through my first deployment, I was in the infantry. So, you know, that's pretty much what you think of when you think of someone that's in the Army. We, you know close on the enemy by fire, as they say. Um, the, uh, st the last time that I was in Iraq, we, um, I ended up, it was pretty interesting, because I ended up controlling uh, a prison block. I was in charge of a prison block. And it was the prison block that all the former regime members were in. So every day, I would talk to Chemical Ali, and I would talk to Tariq Aziz, the former Prime Minister of Iraq, and all the guys from the deck of cards that I'd gotten when I was a young guy. I would talk to these guys, and sort of similar to what you're doing now, but what I would do is I would talk to them and make them comfortable, and then they would talk to the Army historian afterwards. So that was like a big part of, of what I did. And there were a lot of them that were pretty cantankerous, and they had to move all the time from, from there to these court proceedings, and none of them really wanted to do it, so I would get woken up a lot in the, well, middle of the day, because I worked during the night, but uh, middle of the day to, to go talk to them and convince them, and they would say, Lehman, for you, I, I'll go, but, you know, they never wanted to, never wanted to leave. I would, I did a lot of that, just um, making sure that their needs were met, which was kind of strange. You know, I, I joined the Army to, like, fight and Thing that I, the last thing that I ended up doing in the Army is taking care of the needs of, you know, guys that I had heard about since I was a little kid in 1991 when we first went to war with Iraq. Um, so that's why I, the most recent thing that, that I did. Okay. I really didn't have any expectations um, because, well, I thought that, you know, everybody's seen like Full Metal Jacket and everybody's seen, I can tell you that when I was a young private, I did a lot of push ups. Um, I might hold the record for the amount of push-ups having to do because I'm a pretty stubborn guy. Um, but it wasn't necessarily that I had this just deep desire. Um, it's just something that I felt had to be done. And I was really happy that the reason that I chose to do it was to serve because there were so many times that I felt like, man, I'm really getting the short end of the stick right now. Man, I'm really getting... You know, when I got called back, um, so many people told me, listen, just don't go. I mean, they knew nothing will happen. But I said, look, you know, you have to honor your commitments. Um, sometimes people ask me if, if I would do it all over again. Right, that was my next question. Right. Knowing what you know now and having been through it. I don't know if I would or not. Um, that's, a, I guess, not a very good answer. It's but, an honest answer. But it's an honest answer. There was a time in my life where I thought, definitely, this might be the best decision that, I, that I've ever made. But, you know, I'm unsure. I can't tell you now that when, when I originally was in school, when I was in art school, I wasn't a very good student. I was more concerned about girls in my band. And uh, I, I got terrible grades. And now, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm in Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, so I think that there's a certain amount of direction that it, it, it did teach me some certain valuable lessons about life. Um, one thing is that you can always keep going, even when you think that 
you don't have any more left in you. There's always more. You can always push. And that was something that I've, I've used ever since then, that there are things that seem like goals that can seem ridiculous to people, but if you really just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, you can have as much endurance as you allow yourself to have. And that's benefited me um, a lot. So I guess that doesn't really answer the question, but that's what my answer is. If September 11th wouldn't have happened, there's no chance that I would have went into the military. I wouldn't even have thought about it. Um, it was just, it's one of those things, I'm really glad that you guys are doing this actually, because a lot of the students here, they were so young when that happened that it's the experience that they've just always lived with. But for those of us that are older, you know, especially guys that are my age, it's pretty much exactly, you know, you were, I was 19 when it happened, I think, so, you know. It, it was definitely like a, a life-changing experience. I remember what life was like before that and then, and then after that. Um, um, in just a couple days, um, I'm going to be going to law school, and I'm, I'm definitely a more serious student now. Um, I, I think I understand. Um, I've always been interested in foreign policy, but I understand it from a, a new perspective that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So the trajectory of my life was drastically altered um, September 11th. There's no question about it. 